Congress are worsening the situation at the border as they continue to fail to implement common sense policies which would alleviate the crisis. What's up, Bucket Nation? You know who it is. It's your boy, Pat Bucket. You're about to bring you a new video here on my channel. Like I said, I, showed, I posted last night, guys, an update. I'll be um, bringing you a new video, and here it is. Um, this is Sports Talk with Pat Buckets here today. It's a podcast. Like I said, um, I'm going to be starting to do this with my cousin more, but I still have it. we still haven't gotten to that. So I'm bringing you it by myself here. Um, so today we're going to be talking about all the stories going on here in sports right now. You know, we got a lot of stories to uh, go through. Um, there were a lot. There were two champions um, crowned the last two nights. We could talk. We're gonna talk about baseball. We're gonna talk about injuries. We're gonna talk about all this. But let's get started here with last night. Last night, the Toronto Raptors, for the first time in in their history as a team, became the NBA champions as they beat the defending champion Golden State Warriors in six games. 104 to 100. Kawhi Leonard wins the uh, um, finals MVP, but MVP as Toronto celebrated last night in Golden State after a terrific game and a terrific ending. Um, and yeah, for like we said, Kawhi Leonard traded from San Antonio to Toronto. For what could be a one-year rental, we don't know what's going to happen this off-season. But um, what a what a uh, gutsy effort! What a gutsy gutsy um you know choice for Toronto. But it worked out as a tor- as he brings Toronto the championship, his second championship. He won what would say in 2014 and for the second straight year, for the second straight time. Kawhi Leonard takes down the super team. But like we said. The Golden State Warriors were not a super team in the NBA Finals. Everyone can say how much depth they have, how much you know, how much um, personnel they have, where they can they can go through injuries, can get through injuries. But when two of when two of your top three players are injured, get injured, you know, and cannot play, that's it's you can't replace two great players in this league. I don't care who you are. You're not going to bring DeMarcus Cousins who just came back from injury and expect him to play de- like DeMarcus Cousins. He didn't play DeMarcus Cousins all year. He was just a one-year rental. I do not believe Golden State is going to resign him. I think he's going to go somewhere else. But uh, like we said, Golden State lost, but that really, even though that was even a couple prices they had to pay. In game five of the two, game five, um, Kevin Durant suited up to play after missing Missing, I think about ten. They, he missed since the. Um, I'm talking about myself. Um, who did they put? I think they, they, he missed a series after Houston. Then he got injured in game two or something. Um, he injured his calf in game two against Houston, and was forced to. Um, and he was out for the next for the whole series. Missed the whole Portland series and missed most of the NBA Finals. A two return in game five. But at what cost in game five? I think it was in the second quarter. I think it even was in the first or the second quarter. KD went for like he was backing down. Um, I think it was Kawhi. And it looked like his leg just gave out on him. Um and ended up later on, a couple days later, reviewing, revering, revering the worst for Golden State as Kevin Durant ruptured his Achilles in game five, which a lot of people thought he already did. After he got injured, that's why he did not play all those games. Didn't play any any of the games um, following the Houston series. Um, but it finally was shown in Game Five where he finally did rupture his Achilles. And for Golden State fans, for NBA fans around the world, we just had an update this morning: Kevin Durant will miss the whole 2019-2020 season with his rupture Achilles as he recovers from it. He will not play a single game. He will not. There is, I do not believe he'd be able to return for the playoffs. I don't believe they would let him. He's going to miss the whole 2019 2020 season with a, with the rupture of Achilles. But what I've heard at least is that NBA teams are still going to give him his money this offseason. Nothing about the injury is going to change. I think he's going to get his money. That's what I've heard. Um, but the reason I think I heard it from Woj and uh, a couple other people. But when, uh, when you hear from Woj, usually that's that's uh, the confirmation. Sorry, guys, for the messed up hair. You know, I just haven't taken a shower yet. But um, the next story last night um, in the third quarter, 
Clay Thompson uh, went up and, and came down uh, I mean, awkwardly on his right knee. I think it's the right knee. I may be wrong. Maybe it's left. I didn't really watch the game. I saw the replay afterwards. Um, and he went to the locker room. It looked like he was not going to come back. But then before he was about to go to the locker room, he comes back out. He takes his own free throws, stays in the game. But a few minutes later, I got a um, – Got a breach report saying that uh, Clay Thompson is out for the game with a knee injury. And later on that night, um, after the game, it was and this morning, um, Clay Thompson's agent, um, confirmed that um, Clay Thompson tore his ACL last night in in the third quarter against the goal, against the Toronto Raptors. So the Golden State Warriors have now two players that have major injuries, and it could take a while to go. I think Kevin Durant is going to last at least ten to twelve months. I think if I know, if I know um, ACL injuries, I've seen people get ACL injuries. It's about a six to eight month recovery for ACL. Um, being that again, Clay Thompson could miss also a lot of the season coming up. So, like we said, if they both do decide to resign with Golden State, this could be the final year for at least a while that Golden State makes it to the finals. Only if Curry goes completely insane, somehow gets it there himself. But you know, this is this is uh, really shocking. Um, nobody like this is not the way we want Golden State to go down. I understand. We all want them done. We all want them out of finals. We all want them all this. But this is not the way we wanted to go. Having two of the best players in this league go down with severe injuries. And for the Toronto crowd, I'm going to give you this right now. Two, game five, that Toronto crowd, there's a congratulations to Toronto Raptors for the title, all that. But that Toronto crowd, you should be ashamed of yourselves. That's all I'm going to say. You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. Kevin Durant, I don't like the guy because of him going to Kate, to Golden State. It doesn't mean I don't respect him. It doesn't mean, it does not mean that in game five, when he goes down, it is a smart idea to cheer a player getting injured because you know that's that's gonna alter the series towards your direction. That is disgusting if if you ask me. That is that is not what you're supposed to do. I understand Toronto fans. I understand. You guys are trying to win a championship. Who cares about injuries? Who cares about this? But you guys did not beat the full strength warriors. You guys did not. You beat Steph Curry, who was healthy the whole playoffs. Clay Thompson was injured. I he had a couple injuries he had to go through. And you did not have the best player in the game, Kevin Durant, on your team. Toronto won the title. They deserve the title. But you did not beat the Mighty Warriors when they're full strength. Beat them when they're in full strength. Don't have the crowd in Toronto cheering Kevin Durant being injured and having to take out that. Look what happened. This man who loves the game of basketball has to miss 10 to 12 months and will miss the whole season next year with injuries, with an injury. And you're going to laugh at him for it. That was just that was a disgraceful moment if you're a Toronto fan and you should be ashamed of you guys selves. Selves. Like we said, um Toronto the Woods Championship. Let's move on to the next story. And it's that the night before um in the NHL championship, the uh, Stanley Cup finals, the St. Louis Blues won their first Stanley Cup. So the for, for the last two nights, we've had two shockers. Win championships here. Um, the St. Louis Blues beat my Boston Bruins in Game Seven in the um, Stanley Cup Finals, four to one, in a game that you know it. In my part, was a frustrating game to watch. Um, honestly, if if you watched the game, you would tell me the Bruins outplayed St. Louis because of the point being they were um, had more shots. But it that's only if you didn't watch the game. If you watched the game. You would know St. Louis is just the better team. St. Louis took their opportunities and and used them. They got to the they got to where they wanted to shoot the puck. They got it through Tuka Rask. Tuka Rask, again in another clutch game could not get it done. He got it done in Game Six, and we thought, okay, maybe we'll see the clay. Maybe we'll finally see the Tuka Rask. He'll finally bring in that championship. But Tuka Rask had a tough night in Game Seven. Um, you said St. Louis went up 2 nothing in the first period and never looked back after. The Bruins tried their hardest to get back in the game, but Jordan Bennington, the rookie with 39 saves, outplayed Tuka Rask 
and a and the St. Louis Blues for the first time in their history win the Stanley Cup in seven games, four to one. Um, I, I don't. Um, Ryan O'Reilly won won the Conn Smythe um, MVP trophy. Um, a Conn Smythe trophy, I think, is what they call it. Um, and yeah, the Bruins went home. You, you could see if you guys watched the game, the Bruins, the emotions got committed after the game. And why not? It was the most devastating loss. If you're a Bruins fan, you know, devastating loss, maybe in a while, because you have game seven at home. First time you have a game seven ever at home if you're a Bruins. And you expect you got to come out and show up for the fans. It looked like the first period they did on two, they gave up the two goals, which I think just took all the energy out of the building, energy off out of this team. They tried their best to have to try and fight back. They just could not do it. Um, the emotions were shown after the game. Uh, a lot of young players there. He even saw Chara, who played through a broken jaw. Uh, I think it was confirmed it ended up being a broken jaw. Uh, you could see his reaction to being, and this could be the last time he was there. Who knows what's going to happen You're in the future. It was hurt. It was told after the game also that Patrice Bergeron played through some sort of groin injury. Groin injury. So he was hurt. Um... And yeah, it was just, you know, it was a terrific series. I'm going to give it to that. It was a terrific series. Game five was the only really one that was the terrible part. But St. Louis proved they deserved this championship in game seven. I was upset all night. But at the same time, you have to give respect to the team that won. St. Louis won the championship. The Bruins will be back, though. We all know they will be back. Who knows when? Who knows where? But Boston is championship town. We will be back. We definitely will be back at any point. If it's the Red Sox, if it's the Patriots, if it's the Celtics, if it's the Bruins, we'll be back in the title hunt next year. Def so, um, but congratulations to the St. Louis Bruins and the Toronto Raptors for both becoming, for both way their first championships in their histories. That is a great accomplishment to have. Um, you know, at St. Louis, like we said, a team that if everyone knew on January 1st was in last place in the league, you know, last place, had the worst record in the league, for them to then all go all the way up and from first, from worst to first in literally four months, you have to give them their respect. They deserve all the respect for them. Congratulations to them. Um, we're going to see what the Bruins do this offseason. They got to have to get some – I feel like they got to have to get younger. They got a lot of young talent, but I feel like – you know, with Bergeron, like Bergeron still got a few years left. He still has a lot of years left. There. A lot of people think this is it for Bergeron. It's not even close. Bergeron still got it in here to play a few more years. Look at Char. He's 42 and he's still playing. So Char is on his last legs for sure, but I could – Bergeron definitely will be back. There's no doubt about it. This team will be back. Moving on, though, um, to other news. Um, In baseball last night, the Boston Red Sox came back from um, six – one down to beat the Texas Rangers seven to six in a actually really fun game. I did not watch the NBA finals. That's how I was watching the Red Sox game. Um, David Price God was on the mound for the Red Sox last night. Um, gave up six runs in the game. It was now looking good. Only went one one in the third innings. Um, uh, gave us six runs on on ten hits. Um, and I would if if you're fantasy owner, ended up with a forty point zero zero in ERA. I have him, so I know what his stats were. Um, said, um, then we went to the bullpen, um, in the second, a rookie, rookie came in. I don't remember what his name is. Like he said, the rookies are the ones that keep getting confused with came in and had three great innings. Um, the Red Sox got on the board in the bottom of the first with JD hitting a whole run. And then Jackie Bradley, the third inning, the become, began to come back, hit a three run shot. This was going to be a whole run fill night for the Red Sox. Hit a three run shot that cut the lead to four, six to four. Later on in that in that game, um, Michael Chavis did a um, Adrian Beltre um, went to his knee, hit the ball, which everyone thought in the building, in the in the uh, at Fenway, that that ball was going foul. Somehow, out of nowhere, makes a curve like on like turns and goes into the end. It goes into the to the uh, Green Monster just straight on home run. It's six to five. Six to five here. And then later on, um, Rafael Devers, an inning later, hits his 10th home run of the season to tie the game at six. Later on, though, um, 
seventh inning. Uh, Bogarts at the plates, and Bogarts takes a rocket shot to the to the monster out of the park. Red Sox take a seven to six lead, and that would do it, guys. Eighth inning, Bogarts shuts the shuts Texas down, and then in the ninth inning. Because a Heat Henbury, who was supposed to apparently pitch the seventh inning, had a arm had some arm um, soreness, so it could not go in. So they had to switch out the rotation, and a rookie called Josh Smith. No, not Josh Smith for the NBA, but Josh Smith, a rookie, a guy who was just called out for AAA a few weeks ago, a man who started against Tampa Bay on Sunday, gave a four earned in only three innings, and walked about six guys. Got his first save as a Boston Red Sox in an un, in a place where no one expected him to even be in the ball game in the ninth inning, up by one run only of all things. They put in the rookie, and he shuts them down. He gets a big double. He gets a big uh, ground out. Um, they were trying to do a double play, only got one out at second, but they got the lead runner. Next door, he puts in after throwing a few bad pitches, puts in a nasty cutter on the inside, straight perfectly on the corner. Strikes out, um, I think it was um, the Jesus or whatever his name is, not the Jesus, the Shields. It was the Shields. Um, and then they walk, no, no, the Shields was not, it was not the Shields, it was some other guy, but never mind, I don't remember all the text players. Then they walk Chu intentionally after they almost picked off, um, the Shields, that was the Shields at for at second base, and then finally he gets the third guy to pop up to, to the um, to Jackie Bradley. And the boss and Josh Smith gets his first career save and his first chance. It's the Red Sox were like said seven to six and a terrific comeback. Hoping this will be the sign start of a you know a, a start of some kind of run the Red Sox can finally go on because you can see they've been struggling. Um, but I hope the Red Sox can start getting on a run here. Here, um, because that would be awesome. In other sport, in other baseball news, uh, the the uh, New York Yankees lost the Chicago White Sox five to four. Um, the New York Yankees were up four zero early in the game against their um, old pitcher Ivan Nova. Um, with with the Yankees, like you said, dominating at first, but then um, they said Clint Frazier singled out the mail. Brett Gardner scored. Brett Har- Brett Gardner had a two run shot. Shot and then finally here came the um and then in the bottom of the fifth inning here comes the uh, Chicago White Sox with Garcia doubling to deep left center um with Sanchez scoring and then Tim Anderson homering homer a three run shot to to tie the game at four and then later on in the bottom of the seven Laurie Garcia homers to left center to give the Chicago White Sox the lead for good. The Chicago White Sox come back 4 nothing down to beat the New York Yankees 6-5 to five as the Boston Red Sox with their win with the um, San Francisco with not San Francisco, with the Chicago White Sox win, move six games move up to six games now behind the Yankees for first place place. Um, and in other division news, like I said, the Tampa Bay Rays um, lose as well to the uh, LA Angels in Tropicana, where they apparently had a power outage because of big of a storm that went by, so they lost the power for a few minutes, which marks the second time this season. The Tropicana, Tropicana, freaking um, lost power in a game. Uh, Tropicana, okay, sorry guys, I just had to quiet on the TV. But um, in the game, um, the uh, second year phenom, um. Otani, um, Shea Otani had a um, hit for the cycle. He had a home run, double, single, and triple, triple, um, which helped the, the Angels uh, win the game. They were up five nothing as um, Albert Pools had also got a home run in the fifth inning. They're up five nothing. Then Tampa Bay tried to cut it back in. Uh, Tommy Pham single center. Uh, Mike Zanino scores, and also the Daniel Robinson cuts it to two, and also the bottom fifth inning. Diaz with a single that has that scores Tommy Fan, but that would be it for the scoring. The, the Los Angeles Angels beat the Tampa Bay uh, Rays five to three, three, and like I said, that moves the Red Sox now to five, six games behind the Yankees for first place. 
first place here. Red Sox now 36 of uh, 34 the season. 6.5, sorry, back of the Yankees. The Yankees and the Rays have both lost. Um, I mean, the Yankees have lost two straight. Uh, Rays have lost three straight. Straight. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, the LA Dodgers beat the Chicago Cubs 7 to 3. It was the battle of the two aces, John Lester versus uh, Curtin Kersh. I mean, Clay Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw, damn, I know his name too, and it's messed it up. Um, it was not a long night for John Lester, and I have a good night here. Um, top of the first inning, Kyle Schwarber home gets a home run to put you know Chicago up one nothing. Wilson Contreras, the single would get to score Chris Bryan. Then Chris Bryan would homer, so it's three nothing. You're thinking, okay, maybe it's gonna be a Chicago night. Chicago Cubs are gonna win today, but no, here comes the LA Dodgers as close. As right now, the best player right now in the league, Cody Bellinger, at least that's what you're saying in fantasy, Cody Bellinger, homer, gets a home run, a two-run shot that scores David Freeze, and it's 3-2. to One batter later, Max Muncy, another home run to another two-run shot, which gives the gives L.A. the lead, lead 4-3. to three. Later on, David Freeze would put in another two-run shot. So the Dodgers had another home run type night. Two run shot that made six to three, and then Cody Bellinger hits his second home run of the game that puts the LA Dodgers up seven to three, and that would be the final. The LA Dodgers with seven to three. Clayton Kershaw gets the win as he goes. As Clayton Kershaw goes six and eight, seven hits, three runs, three earned, three walks, with I mean, two walks, eight strikeouts. Strikeouts here. Well, John Lester has a rough night. Said. Five innings, nine hits, six runs, six earned, one walk, seven strikeouts. As the LA Dodgers like said, win, win. As the Dodgers continue to try to take take over the, continue to you know dominate that um, NL West um, division. I really don't believe anyone's going to catch them. Um, Chicago, the Chicago, I mean not Chicago, the Colorado Rockies beat the LA. I mean the um, San Diego Padres nine to six. Six. They're the only other team right now fighting with the. Um, Whiffs, um, the LA Dodgers, San Diego's lost a few straight here. Um, Jay uh, Gray went six innings, giving up nine hits, four runs, four earned, 10 strikeouts for Colorado. While for San Diego, um, Stra- Strahan gave up well, only one three and a, three and a one third, seven runs, six hit, seven hits, six runs, six earned, four walks, and four strikeouts. Strikeouts here. Um, we said Manny Machado homered early, but Charlie Blackman took over, had two home runs in the game, one in the, one in the, um, one sec. Try to forget where he homered. Well, Trevor Story homered before him in the bottom of the second, and then, oh yeah, Charlie Blackman homer in the fourth, Machado in the fifth. Machado, both guys, Machado and Blackman homered twice in the game. Blackman and homer in the sixth, Machado would homer later on in the ninth. But it was all Chicago, Colorado Rockies. Colorado wins nine to six. Six as they continue to their win streak up after a rough start to the season. They're starting to get pack up wins and they're back into the division as they fight for that wild card spot. Um, Kansas City Royals beat the uh, Detroit Tigers seven to three in a you know just two teams that are not going anywhere this season. But um, nice to see um, the Kansas City Royals get a win here. Um, for Detroit, Michael Boy went four innings, gave him six hits, five runs, four earned, two walks, seven strikeouts. Well, for set for um, Kansas City, um, Homer Bailey, I've, I did not know they had him, gave up two hits, no runs, three ball, I mean, three walks and six strikeouts. Had a good game there for Homer Bailey as Kansas City beats, like I said, um, the Tigers seven to three. The Blue Jays destroyed the uh, Baltimore Orioles 12 to 3. Um, that's not a surprise. Baltimore's just going to be losing all season. Um, because, yeah, you know, draft picks. <laughs> you know, rebound. You know, um, Craig, Craig Biggio's uh, son, um, Kevin Biggio, Homer twice in the game, the rookie. Another great game for him. Um, we would There would be a home run by um, Guriel. Guriel here, um, Biggio he said homered again, and then a home run later on by the by um Baltimore, but they had no chance. Like I said, Toronto wins twelve to three. 
three as they continue as uh, both teams continue to uh, you know rebuild. Uh, Marcus Stroman went six in a year, seven hits, two runs, one earned, five strikeouts, while for Baltimore. So my guy, some guy named Yona, Yona, five, five innings, seven runs, three runs. I mean, seven hit, three runs, three earned, one strikeout. Um, as like I said, Toronto wins. Baltimore move. I mean, ba- Baltimore will be playing the Boston Red Sox this weekend in Baltimore, starting tonight. Tonight will be Chris Sale versus Andrew Kashner on the mound here. Um, first pitch expects for seven ten. 7-10. Um, Diamondbacks beat the Washington Nats in a crazy game. They had a rain delay in the ninth inning for all things, but uh, I mean, already eighth inning. But um, like I said, Arizona beats Washington 5-0. Another great start for um, Granke, who went who had seven and uh, seven and one, you know, seven point one innings, two hits, no earned runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Strikeouts for Washington. They end up having someone named Eddie Fetty go six, six innings, six hits, five runs, five earned, three walks, one strikeout. Another struggling game for Tam- for Washington, just having a rough season. It was followed by Avila getting a home run tonight. Um, Jared Dyson homering, homering against the like, Arizona Diamondbacks, staying the hunt up with a five nothing win. When the Minnesota um, Twins continue their their dominant play so far in 2019, as they beat the Seattle Mariners, a team that started way hot, and like I predicted, like I told my cousin, I told everybody, the Seattle Mariners were not going to be able to sustain that success all season. The one thing because of their defense, and the other thing because they're rebuilding. They're a young team. They're not going to be great all season. You know, Seattle. They have a great first. They have like a great month or two, and then they suck the rest of the time. <clears throat> it's like a mess time here, but like I said, the Minnesota Twins, who the Red Sox will be playing on their world trip with the win here. Nelson Cruz had a home run in this game. Had a home run in this game, which was in the bottom of the third inning. That'll be the only really home run. Uh, other than, uh, sorry, CJ Crone with a home run, which I think is his 18th of the year. Oh, no, no, 15th of the year. It's his 15th of the year. Uh, Nelson Cruz hit his 12th. As like you said, Minnesota wins again. Again, uh, Mariners had um, their rookie kick cut Chewy go five innings, six hits, one earned run. Shocking, only got one earned run and one run only. Two walks and four strikeouts here. While for Minnesota, they had um, they had Pineda go five and two thirds, two hits, one run, one earned, two balls. So and 4K that means the Seattle Manners bullpen gave it up. Gave it up. Dominant performance again by Minnesota. They go five. They went five to five to ten. I'll tell you guys the standings right after the last one. That's the um in the final game. That was the early game. It was the num- first game of the of day. The Atlanta uh Braves beat the Pittsburgh Pirates six to five. Six to five here. Um as Atlanta now is in first place in their division. Division. Um, that ended up being, let me see. Not many home runs. There were no home runs in the game. Um, Pittsburgh had um, Musgrove go four innings, nine hits, six runs, six or two walks, and three Ks. Ks. Uh, well, for the uh, Atlanta, they had, I think I know who was pitching. I had him. Oh, yeah, they have. Um, Julio Tehran goes six innings, three hits, two runs, one earned, three walks, two strikeouts. As the oh, as the Atlanta Braves win six to five over the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates, which caps off a, another long day of baseball. That's the first time I've ever just told you guys all the score. That I'm looking <clears throat> time my throat out. Okay, quickly, I'll tell you guys the standings um, when they come up. When Bleacher Report decides to be an ass. But uh, like we said, all I know right now is the Yankees are in first place. 41 wins, 27 losses. I think that's how it is. So 23, 27 losses. Well, uh, there were 42 wins. Tampa Bay 41 wins. Um, Red Sox have said 38 to 36, which, yeah. Concern, or 36, 34. Here we go. Yankees 41, 26. Tampa, Tampa Bay 41, 27. 
Red Sox at third with 36-34. Blue Jays 25-43 and the Orioles 21-47. Um, in the AL Central, the Minnesota Twins 45-22. and 22. They are now 11 games Top of the Cleveland Indians, who are 34-33. And the Whites are 33-34, still in the hunt. Tab, uh, Detroit, 25-40. And the Kansas City Royals, 22-46. And the AL West, um, Houston Astros running away with the division, 46-23. Tampa, the um, Texas Rangers, though, coming back into a 9.5 games back, 36-32. Um, Oakland A, 35-34. Angels, 34-35. And um, uh and the Seattle Manners now 29 and 43 at the start of the season. So now 18.5 games back in the NL West East. Like I said, Braves took over at first place a couple of days ago, up now 40 and 29, seven game win streak for them. Um, Philadelphia second at 30 and 30, Mets 33 and 34, six games back, 31 and 37. Washington will not 8.5 games back. Met Miami Marlins 24 42, 14.5 games back. In Anno Central, Milwaukee uh, Brewers 29, 29 uh, Cubs 38 30, Cardinals now 33 33. Uh, finally, though, uh, what's it called? The uh, Cle- the Cincinnati Reds are out for last place. I'm shocked. 38 36, and the um, Pittsburgh Pirates look like they got on a roll are now seven games back at 30 and 38. With, uh, and then the National League West, like we said. Dodgers pretty much running away with a 46-23 record, which Chicago, like you said, Colorado now back on at 2, 36-32, 9.5 games back. So on the Atlanta, not Atlanta, the Arizona Car uh, Diamondbacks, 37-33, they are 9.5 games back too. Um, the uh, San Diego Padres lost, have lost five straight at our 33-36, and then the Giants, 28-38, 60.5 games back, have a two-game win streak. So yeah, those are the standings. And Jesus Christ, that may make us all say, I'm not going to talk too much more. Um, we're just quickly going to go over the Women's World Cup. The U- Team USA on Tuesday um, killed, beat Thailand 13 to nothing in, in the, their first match at the World Cup. It was just a dominant performance. Um, this great job there by the USA women. Um, last night, though, like we said, we could go through this. France beat Norway 2 to 1. Germany beat Spain 1-0. Nigeria beat South Korea 2-0. Um, yes. And then yesterday, I guess that was that was Wednesday. And then yesterday, South Korea, South Africa lost to China 1-0. Australia beat Brazil 3-2 in the only two World Cup. Today, Matt, and then today so far, I guess there have been two games already played. Um, Jamaica loses to it- Italy 5-0. I'm expecting Italy to go far. Japan, who is USA's pretty much rival in this beat Scotland 2-1. to one. Um, Later on today, we're going to see England, Argentina, um, and then Brazil, and Bolivia, I think. If that, no, never mind. Brazil, Bolivia is not in that. Um, USA play next on, I think, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Yep, they play Sunday against Chile, uh, which is supposed, pretty much supposed to be a win. Sweden, who is the other guy, team in this division, is fighting with USA. We'll be playing Thailand. The problem is for for um, Sweden is that the USA won't score 13 points. They're going to have at least that in favor if they end up having a break or a tiebreaker or something. So uh, that is good. Um, and yeah, well, Women's World Cup, like I said, if you guys are interested, I'm not really into soccer. I am going to watch it because, it, you know, Team USA is in. They're actually good. But other than that, guys, that's been all the sports news I, I um, have for you guys today. Um, other than this, um, there have been no new reports on the Anthony Davis trade right now. It looks at like the Celtics and the Lakers are the two teams that I really fight for. Apparently, right now, the Pelicans would rather trade with the Celtics than the Lakers. Only if, apparently, the Lakers can somehow work out a deal with Washington to get Bradley Beal to go to New Orleans. So, I don't know how that's going to work out. But it looks at like the Celtics right now are going to probably be the team they trade them to. Uh, Kyrie looks like he's intended to sign with Brooklyn when he becomes a free agent on July, f- on June 20, June 30th. Um, and yeah, you know, there's going to, it's going to be a wild off season. We're going to see, you know, what happens with Clay Thompson, and Kevin Durant, uh, Kyrie, uh, Anthony Davis, all this stuff. Uh, what's going to happen to the draft when the Suns got draft, whoever these teams going to draft. Um, I think also what the draft's going to do, you know, Zion going to New Orleans, it looks like. 
RJ Barrett looks like he's going to be going to um uh what's it called? New York um and oh uh, no, New York sorry, Ja, ja Mor Morant is gonna be going to the Mil Mil Memphis and then um uh, um uh, TJ Barrett's gonna be going to um New York is what they're expected. But then it's gonna be a fun with the sports when I'm, when there's a new story, I will come on here and cover if, if I said if um Anthony Davis does get traded, I will um I will um, come online and tell you guys about it. I also will be do when when free agent starts, I will be doing videos doing free agency um you know free agency talk here on my channel. I'm gonna talk about who where free agents should sign, who should sell the sell, who should your team sign. So give me your favorite teams in the comment section. I'll tell you guys who who I feel like should sign you guys teams. Um, please also go to the comment section and tell me what other videos you guys want to see. But other than that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please go like this video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. There are going to be new videos here. I hope that my cousin here doing um, and he started to help me with these videos here. We're going to be doing album reviews and stuff, but sports talks going to be the one thing. You guys are going to definitely enjoy me and him arguing over things that are going on. Um... So I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I hope you guys um st stay tuned for that. Once I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Damn, worst time for that. But um, other than that, guys, this has been Pat Buckets, and that was the Sports Talk podcast on the Pat with Pat Buckets. Till next time, guys. Please stay tuned. Please keep working hard. Please don't give up on your dream because one day. Your dreams will come true, and you will finally get to your goal. Till next time, guys. This has been Pat Buckets, signing off for tonight. Good night, and peace. Peace, everyone.